Morning, church. Um, I know I say that all the time, but I am saying good morning because it's it's another morning day, whatever it is. And so uh, it's beer o'clock somewhere in the world. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's sermon o'clock somewhere in the world. Amen. <laughs> oh, God is good. A uh, bit of laughter makes us well, doesn't it? It makes us well. Makes us so, so well. Um, so we've been just on this theme. Do we have power? Do we have the authority? The same power and the same authority. Uh, we, we don't really have the same power and authority that God can create something from nothing with his word um, because he can. Uh, we can't create anything from nothing. We, we actually need a substance. We need a piece of wood. We need, we, we need something that's already created by God to create something else. But I'm, I'm amazed at what people actually do create with a piece of wood and uh, just art and painting. And we've got a guy in our church, Michael, and Michael just He's such a good painter. He's incredible. He just can paint. And, um, and some of it's just, I mean, he's not like copying anything. He's just painting a person and painting something. And just quite incredible. And that's, that's such a gift, you know, that he can actually create something uh, in, a, in a sense from nothing. But he's using products that have been created. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So... Um, uh, our words are powerful. It says in Proverbs, it says 18, 11, it says that we actually have the power of life and death in them. Uh, we can create um, a, 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 you know, life with our words or death, depending upon what we want to do. We've also been looking at some scriptures like Romans chapter uh, 4, about the story of Abraham, how that he changed, that God changed his name. I, I want to just maybe say something on that thought and I've said this many times before a lot of my my messages over the years and that is that we need to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us so important because that will will cause your confession to get in line with with him um, God changed a lot of people's names in the Bible some of them he didn't change their name but he declared something over them of who they actually are and how he sees them. Sometimes how he sees us is in how others see us or how we see ourselves. Um, God said to Abram, your name is now Abraham. Uh, I believe before time began, his name was always going to be Abraham. It's, it's how God saw him. God saw him as someone that he had chosen, that he had called to be the father of many nations. And so there just came a point in time that he needed to be told that and was told that. Um, and so he needed to then see himself that way and speak about himself that way um, by faith, believing that that's what God was going to do. That's the promise. That's how you call things into existence. It's this identity thing. It's so crucial because faith is linked to knowing who you are in Christ. It really is. It, you, won't, you won't pray with authority. You won't pray with uh, power. You won't, you won't even read the Bible properly sometimes without, without actually knowing actually who you are. You're a child of God. You've been adopted in the family of God. I love it where Simon was, was called, uh, his name was Simon, and, you know, means kind of reed, um, blowing in the wind. He's kind of, you know, hit and miss, not really a stable kind of guy. Um, I'm sure he was just kind of a footloose and fancy free kind of guy, and loved fishing and loved doing the things that he did. But, but God always had seen Simon as Peter, a rock, someone stable, someone uh, as a kind of a stable fortress, and, you know, and then Jesus began to address him that way. I'm sure the other disciples still saw him as Simon, 
still saw him as this, eh, Simon, here he goes again, you know. But that changed Simon's life. It actually changed him. Because how Jesus saw him, how Jesus spoke to him, how Jesus addressed him, changed his whole life. Because it changed his identity. And so made him a person who actually became, I think, he was probably already a bit of a radical guy and would step out and put his foot in his mouth sometimes and do, do things that he probably shouldn't do. But that just enhanced his faith. That just enhanced him to be able to actually walk on water. I mean, he, he actually walked on water. Yeah, we, we focus on the, the drowning, or the, not the drowning, but the, the sinking. But he walked on water. And, he, and, and that's incredible. Nobody else did that. I've never done that. Man, alive. It's incredible. And so, um, you know, seeing yourself how he sees you is really important. One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is the story of Gideon. Now, his, his name was never changed, but God spoke to him of how he saw him. Uh, he comes to him and he says, listen, Gideon, you know, the angel appears to him. He's hiding in a wine press, as you do. Um, hopefully he wasn't drinking too much in that depressed state. But uh, um, actually I heard, I've heard they, they've put a, a consignment or they've put a, a, a limit on how much alcohol we can buy. Aussies, when they get in a, in a place of isolation, they just go out and buy a bunch of alcohol and get drunk all the time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard that on the news today. Anyhow, so Gideon's... don't know why I said that. Anyhow, Gideon's in, the, in this place of the wine press, hiding from the Midianites. And, you know, he's in this place. And God just begins to say, Oh, mighty man of valor. I see you as a mighty man of valor. Strength and power in your life. And he goes, Who? who who's that? What? Huh? You know, um, and he, he realized that God's speaking to him. But he, he's so caught up in who he, who he thinks he is, how he sees himself, how everybody else has probably been seeing him all these years. And he goes, I'm the least of the least of my family. And our tribe is the lowest of the lowest of the tribes of Israel. You know, we, we don't amount to anything. And God goes, yep, that's why I'm choosing you. But, but God totally ignores what he's saying about himself. Doesn't even hear it. Doesn't even listen to it. But says, Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. I have chosen you to do something great in the kingdom. And God begins a process. I love the story of Gideon because God begins this process of making him into this mighty man of valor of faith in God and of trust in God and someone who can begin to be, be able to speak that into existence and be able to speak uh, um, um, victory in his life and also begin to be, trust God in his life to actually overcome the enemy that was coming against not only himself but the whole nation of Israel at the time. And an incredible story. Everybody probably knows the story of Gideon. But anyhow... Uh, I just want to leave, the, leave you with that, is that our confession needs to line up with how God sees us and also how we, we uh, uh, because that will change how we see ourselves. And it will grow our faith in God and our trust in God to be able to speak forth in power and authority and dominion and declare things in our lives when we get that identity right. How he sees us, not how we see ourselves sometimes, not how everybody else sees us, but how God sees us. Get a fresh word from God, how he sees you. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now that every person that's watching this, Lord, you begin to speak to them. You de declare to them that they are mighty men and women of God, that they are uh, kings and priests in the kingdom of God. They are sons and daughters. And... Uh, um, declare to them who they are personally in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.